this at a really weird angle. <laughs> Find anything up here we have the 
risk in game. Here we have the iPhone case, Olivia's iPhone case, iPhone case, iPhone case. We have a bag that I've used in a video before. We have some jewelry. since both my hands are tied. Maybe I should have had an assistant for this video. But yeah, when I've uh, gone on a little tour around the apartment, I usually come back here, maybe go through the kitchen a little bit, see if we can find something here. We have all the, oops, lockers. So, like 100% legit, like this, recycling stuff is like a prime location to find ASMR items for me. I can show you some of the items. Alright guys, so welcome back to another episode of ASMR items that you can find in your recycling bin today. Let's go. First up, we have a prime tapping item. We have the... Uh, empty, oddly good barista milk. Who doesn't love that? Empty salt packet, not to me. Prime ASMR item. some volumizing lotion, empty baguette. Right on the spot, right on the spot. This is a classic. This is a classic recycling bin ASMR item. ASMR um, uh, and usually at this point I start like fixing my desk and everything to set up for shooting but since today is a Saturday and my room is also a mess I'm gonna start by just cleaning up my room a little bit not because I want to do it for the video because I really want to do it for myself so I can just be relaxed and chill when I record a video. So I'm gonna clean up my room a little bit and then we're gonna get going. All right, so I have now cleaned up my room a little bit. It looks a lot nicer now. I'm probably gonna clean up a little bit more later. Um, and uh, if you're wondering like, why don't I just always keep all my camera lenses and everything nice and tidy here. Uh, you see, I kind of started some kind of storage thing here. And the reason for that is like that everything on this whole shelf, including like the camera that I'm recording on, all of these like hard drives, my computer, all of that is like going back and forth to my office all the time. I use most of that stuff for work. I have to like pack and unpack and pack and unpack all the time. All the time. And I 
second, now let me rig up this desk. So good. 
ready to start recording the video. Today is just going to be a simple tapping video because Olivia is going to be home in a few minutes or not a few minutes, like half an hour maybe. So I have to record this and the, like the whole behind the scenes thing took a lot longer than I expected. So it's going to be a simple tapping video, but I'm going to leave you guys back here for a little while and I'm going to go record the video and I'll catch up with you afterwards. this one is going out tonight and uh, yeah thank you for watching bye but the video is not over for the behind the scenes gang you guys can have some tapping as well.
let's go. I'm gonna keep you guys over there and maybe I'll just pop up like a little uh, window down in the corner or something. Alright. So, you should be able to see my screen now. I'll just adjust the microphone. So, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up DaVinci Resolve, which is the editing software that I use. Uh, it's like the it's a really good editing software, like, yeah, and you know, uh, this is my, <laughs> that's what I film for work, that kind of stuff. It's quite different from ASMR, um, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and open the project called The Stuff, which is, for some reason, the, the name I chose for all my, like, ASMR projects. So let's jump into The Stuff. here, like a little pre-workout drink, because I'm actually going to the gym just after recording this. It's like a beer and vanilla flavored kind of thing, and it doesn't, it's not like a pre-workout, it doesn't contain any caffeine, but it has some kind of thing that makes your body like scratch a little bit. If you've ever had a pre-workout, you know what I mean? But anyways, we have now gotten into DaVinci Resolve, and uh, up here you can see all the different folders that I've made for ASMR videos. Uh, I think the first like couple of months in the beginning I didn't edit in this project, so these are from... Yeah, this project actually started when I recorded my first video in this new apartment. Sorry for interrupting all the time with hand sounds. I'm just not used to not doing ASMR. Anyways, uh, here we can see all the different videos. Uh, US, when I was in the US, ASMR rambling. You can make this a little bit bigger. Uh, best tapping, best hand sounds, blah, 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 blah. The last one at the bottom is the mic triggers video that I uploaded uh, on Friday last week. say last week, I'm taking into account that this video is probably not going to be uploaded for a couple of days. But what I want to do now is I want to create a new folder. So new bin, and we're going to call it ASMR tapping uh, short, because the video that I recorded today was quite short. So I'll just call it ASMR tapping short. And then I usually go into the previous bin and copy the timeline so I just duplicate that timeline and then drag it into the new folder and rename it to ASMR tapping short and then we can go ahead and open up this timeline so it's gonna pop up down here and then we can close the other one just take this video and remove it and once that is done we have to go out to red which is the
is also recording audio and then I sync it together so usually it will look something like maybe like one being just a little bit longer than the other but now since I did some rambling with you guys before it's quite you know uneven but now is like the moment of truth because what you're supposed to do when you start recording on separate like sources you're supposed to do the clap if you've ever seen in a movie when they do the like you know with the little thing like before like whoo, uh, that's partly to see like the shot name and everything on the what's it called uh, on the like writing like maybe shot number four blah 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 but then the audio as well is like syncing together all the different audio sources uh, so but yeah I usually don't clap before my videos or anything but it usually works out anyway so we just right click and we choose auto line clips based on the wave form and hopefully it's gonna be able to sync up the audio to start and then I usually don't do 
much else than just add a little bit of fade in the beginning here. Maybe a little bit more. That's okay. And then I go all the way to the end of the video and do the same thing. see where I actually end the video. Way down to the floor. Hang on guys, let me just change the battery. Oh, I didn't ever realize. I forgot the fact that I had to change battery in this video, so that explains why the audio file was so long. Just hold on one second and I'm gonna have to transfer that other clip as well. Alright, so I am back and uh, I have now transferred the other clip to my computer and into the project. Uh, it's actually quite good that this happened uh, by mistake because now I can, uh, now it's at, at least a little bit more interesting because now I have to match up the remaining audio with that clip uh, and that kind of explains why the audio was so much longer than the video because I have to change my memory card in the middle of the recording, so the video is two separate recordings. So let's just jump back into the program here. And I'm gonna take the second clip up here, which is the second part of the video. And I'm gonna have to get back the audio that we deleted, so we're just gonna drag this out again. And instead of deleting it, we're just gonna cut it right there and then link these up again. And then we're gonna do the same audio sync process on this clip. Hope it works, hope it works, hope it works. I'm so sorry if this became like super confusing now, but hopefully, yeah, hopefully it's okay. I think. here. 
like so. So now we have the full video ready to go. Uh, in terms of like audio syncing and the actual footage that is going to be used. So now we're going to go into an effect down here. This is very important to not forget. I forget it sometimes, but we're going to use an effect called Stereo Fixer. And we're just going to click this one, Reverse Stereo, just to make sure that you get your audio in the right ear. Because for me, this is my right side, but this is your left side. So we just have to use that effect on both of these audio clips. I just wanted to make both. And now we can basically get into the color grading. So then we go down here to the color tab. And um, if I was editing this and not recording the behind the scenes, I would simply just find a video that I shot in a similar because here are all the like little like color screenshots from my previous videos. So I would just take this one, for example, which was shot in this room right here, and I would just drag it on like this, and I would make minor adjustments. But let me, for the sake of this video, we can do it from the start. So let's get into color grading. Uh, DaVinci Resolve, the editing software, is like a, it's like the standard in movie business for color grading, I think. And it's really awesome, but it can, it can also look very complicated. So I'm not going to go very much into depth in this video. I'm just going to take you through like a little step by step. So uh, on the right side here, we have our nodes. And I'm just going to add my typical node tree, like so. So uh, the first thing I do is I go into node number three, and I use a thing called color space transform. Because as you can see, the footage is very gray and not at all like what you see in the final video. And that's because I'm shooting with a specific color profile that's called S-Log3, or maybe it's a Gamma, I don't know. Uh, and it basi basically means that the picture is getting very, like, flat. It's a very flat color profile. And the flatter, the better when it comes to shooting video. Like, if you watch, like, a Hollywood movie straight out of camera, there would be, like, almost no color at all. It's like the better camera, the more expensive camera you have, the shittier it's going to look like straight out of camera. So that's why we need to use something called color space transform, because we want to transform this S-Log3 gamma into Rec. 709 which is like the standard gamma for all video, TV, and everything like YouTube. Basically all like streamed online video is Rec. 709. I think maybe movies as well. But then we have to take and just like just to explain a little bit why you would want to shoot in like a flat color profile. It has to do with like the way I usually try to explain it to someone who doesn't know this stuff is that imagine like having a very like blank canvas that you're gonna color compared to having a canvas that's already been colored by someone else. You're gonna have a lot easier time making it and shaping it into the colors that you want if it was no color on it from the beginning. I think that's an okay, like, beginner's explanation. So basically, you want a flat color profile to have more flexibility when editing. And I know that it's totally overkill to shoot in S-Log3 for ASMR. I could totally just go with a different color profile. But since my camera is already set for S-Log3 for all my other stuff, it would just take longer for me to, like,
like change the color profile every time I'm recording and stuff but yeah back to the actual color grading so we're gonna choose S gamma 3 cine as our input color sprays space and Sony S log 3 as our input gamma and then we're gonna choose rec 709 and rec 709 a no gamma 2.4 Actually, let's go with Rec. 709A. Uh, let's actually go with this one, use timeline. I was uncertain on what I do. Yeah, that looks the same. But basically now it's gonna go from S log 3 to the timeline gamma that I have, which is Rec. 709. I'm gonna leave this because it's so confusing. You can see right now that it's already looking a lot better. We get some colors, we get some contrast. Uh, so now I would probably go back here to the first node and start uh, like fiddling around with my exposure. So I'll drag down the lift a little bit, increase the gain a little bit. And if you want to go into detail, you can watch down here on the parades to make sure nothing is like blowing out or anything. But since this is ASMR, we just want like mellow, nice, subtle lighting with some shadows. And this was shot during the day as well, so obviously it's going to be a little bit more bright than usual. You know, I usually don't spend a lot of time on this because I have these presets already ready. But yeah, I'm liking that exposure and then I move on to here and here you can change or you can do anything on any node but on my second node I usually change my saturation and my color temperature if I want it to be cooler or if I want it to be warmer but I'm actually enjoying the color temperature that we have right now so I'm probably just gonna increase saturation a little bit Let's see the before and after. Just a very subtle saturation increase. And now we're going to go back to the edit tab and try to get rid of this little white line up here on the side. So we can just zoom in a little bit. Though. A little bit, a little bit. And then position it so that the mic is in the center so makes good sounds like how is that not a good collaboration for an ASMR disc perfect and then I kind of want to get rid of like I want to make this white part here a bit darker as you can see here behind me I still haven't painted that part of the room so there's like a white strip there not, not much I can do about it except for adding a graduated filter like so putting it here then I can press this button to see what this filter is affecting and it's affecting everything that's gray so we're gonna want to invert it so now it's affecting that side and then we'll just drag down or actually now I was wrong it's affecting everything that's not gray so we're gonna want to keep it like this and then we can just drag down the lift a little bit make it a little more smooth we can do that and then just lower the saturation so that it's not like because it has some kind of yellow tone on it so it's not completely gone, but it's looking better than before. It's not like that much in your face as it was before. Let's actually drag it back so we don't get that thing. I actually, I think, 
because it's daylight, I'm just gonna higher it up a little bit more. That's gonna have to be okay for this one. Like I said, I wouldn't spend a lot of time on this. I would just do something and then, yeah, upload it. The last thing I do is I go into this node, the last node, and just add a little bit of sharpness. I usually go with 047, that's just a random number, but uh, it works in in this case. Because the S-Log color profile is also very like unsharp. Because you want it to be, so you can control the sharpness afterwards. So now we have this color graded, everything's looking good. I usually just look through to see that there's no no point where like the sun is coming through and just blowing everything out. But this is looking okay throughout the video. And then since we have two clips in this one, I just go to this one and then I middle mouse click this to copy all those settings over to the other video. And then I also have to copy the adjustments that we made to like the positioning and everything. So just copy here and then paste attributes and I'll just make sure everything is like unclicked except for video attributes. So that's going to change this to be the same as this. Let's double check this transition. in the next one. Bye.